Walters to begin, ask him to speak loudly and clearly into this microphone, and he will be showing slides. And I also ask that we hold all questions for the speakers until all have finished their presentations, and then we'll have, uh, we'll have them all at once. Mark. Thanks very much, Dr. Daly, and I, uh, good morning, and I appreciate the opportunity to present the results of uh, the trial that we've conducted in this forum. So on behalf of my colleagues and the study sponsor, uh, I will show updated results from the North Star study gene therapy for thalassemia major using the lentoglobin BB305 drug product. Just a, a bit of background about thalassemia major. Um, this is a hereditary disease uh, that causes a defect in making hemoglobin. Hemoglobin, as you probably know, is the protein in blood that carries oxygen to all our tissues and is, uh, is needed for life. So um, these uh, individuals are generally diagnosed in the first year of life and need to start red blood cell transfusions for this disorder. Um, these transfusions are administered monthly and uh, lifelong. They contain uh, more iron in each transfusion than can be eliminated naturally. So uh, children also and adults must also receive a medicine to uh, leach the excess iron uh, from the body, without which uh, iron would uh, poison vital organs such as the heart, liver, and pancreas and lead to medical problems such as diabetes and heart failure. Now, this is a cumbersome and expensive therapy and is treated in this study by the uh, gene therapy vector um, displayed on the slide in this schematic form. It carries a healthy copy of the globin gene that replaces the defective one in the patient's own stem cells. And uh, it's marked in such a way by the um, alphabet soup so that uh, this single amino acid change can be detected in the blood after the treatment. Um, it's been used to um, it's been used to, um, to uh, correct mouse models of thalassemia and sickle cell disease, and it eliminated uh, red blood cell transfusions in a few patients with thalassemia that were presented at this meeting last year. Now, a, a few um, highlights about the patient characteristics and complications of the treatment. Um, these were all adults, uh, actually adolescents and adults, receiving regular blood cell transfusions with a thalassemia major phenotype, which is defined in that way. Uh, now, six of the patients had um, a type of thalassemia in which the transfusions were started very early in life, uh, in the first year of life, that we term beta zero, beta zero. The remaining patients had a different form of thalassemia major in which the transfusions were started later in life. The, the vector copy number in the stem cells and the number of stem cells that were transduced were judged adequate for the treatment and so were used uh, in all the patients. Um, the patients are prepared for the treatment by first receiving a single chemotherapy drug, busulfan, which destroys all the thalassemia producing cells in the bone marrow. This creates a space uh, for the lentoglobin transduced stem cells to grow. And the type and frequency uh, severity of complications that we observed were typical of this kind of therapy. They were short-lived, um, treated by supportive care means, and all the patients recovered. And it's important to note also that there was no evidence of clonal dominance. That is, there was no evidence of activation of a cancer-causing gene from the stem cells. The production of the lentoglobin in the blood is depicted in this graph, and each of these lines represents um, a single patient enrolled in the trial. And what you can see over time is this trajectory of increased lentoglobin expression over time, so that by nine months after the infusion, uh, a median of 6.5 grams per deciliter of the lentoglobin was observed, and this is a level much higher than would be produced uh, by these patients naturally. There was one patient, just one, a unique patient, in which the lentoglobin expression declined and then later stabilized uh, by one year after the infusion. Now, the most important slide of this presentation is this one, in which extended transfusion independence was demonstrated in some of the subjects. These were the individuals who had a thalassemia major type where transfusions were started later in life. And in this figure, uh, the 
each patient is represented by uh, the, the pair of bar graphs. The upper light blue graph indicates the time since the lentoglobin infusion, and the lower dark blue graph shows the time since the last transfusion was administered. And in each case, in each of these um, five patients, transfusions were stopped by three months after the drug product lentoglobin was in infused, and up to 16 months, 16.4 months uh, time since um, uh, the last transfusion was administered. So the total hemoglobin in the range of 9 to 12 is sufficient to no longer need transfusions. This uh, shows, this graph shows the reduction in the transfusions over time in the patients with a different type of uh, thalassemia major. This is the group of patients who had, who received transfusions in the first year of life. And what it shows over time is a reduction in the, both the volume showed by the, the dark blue bars and number shown by the red dots in this figure. And you can see that over time there was a significant reduction in the volume of transfusions administered. And in one case, uh, the transfusions have been stopped in, in their entirety. The, the panel second from the left, um, patient 1106, is a unique patient in that transfusions were stopped for six months and then later resumed at a 50% reduced level compared to baseline. This is still, this is an, an important finding in that the reduction of transfusions will translate into a reduction in the accumulation of iron in the body and uh, should lessen the burden of treatment and reduce the number of complications these patients experience. This slide is a different way to look at the, the results and I want to draw your attention to the green dotted line drawn across the top of the figure with, uh, with a level nine grams per deciliter. This is the level at which transfusions are no longer needed. And we've separated the two groups of patients in, in those uh, where transfusions are started in the first year of life and those where the transfusions were started later. And you can see that the lentoglobin production indicated in pink is the same in both groups of patients. But in the group on the left, there is sufficient native hemoglobin synthesized such that one reaches the level of hemoglobin at which transfusions are no longer needed. The group on the right, however, has a much smaller amount of native hemoglobin being made so that intermittent transfusions are needed. So this is the conclusion slides that summarizes the takeaways of this talk. First, all of the subjects, all 13 subjects enrolled in the trial experienced a clinical benefit, and in some cases, the transfusions were stopped. Uh, second, this is a, appears to be a safe treatment in that all the patients treated uh, recovered completely after infusion of the lentoglobin drug product. Finally, the, uh, to date, the um, analysis shows no evidence of uh, activation of a cancer-causing gene in the stem cells infused. Now, this is a significant advance in the treatment of thalassemia for several reasons. First, um, Compared to a bone marrow transplant, which is the only curative therapy that's been proved, this appears to be a safer treatment in that none of these uh, patients had a life-threatening complication. Second, um, because the treatment uses a thalassemia patient's own stem cells, this bypasses the need to find a healthy bone marrow donor and thus should be um, more broadly available to patients affected by this disease. And second, uh, all of the subjects experience either a reduction in the transfusion volume or uh, a, need no, no, a need no longer to receive the transfusions. Thanks very much for your attention. I'd like to uh, also acknowledge and thank the families and patients who participated in the trial.